Hi there you guys, I'm Teddy from Bijuteo Beading and I'm going to show you today how to make this beautiful brick stitch bracelet and I'm showing it really easy and step by step and I'm providing a pattern so I'm sure even if you're a beginner you will be able to make it by yourself. If you want to support me it's a good idea to subscribe and hit the bell button and in this way you will know when I make matching jewelries to the ones that I have already done and you will be able to make beautiful sets for presents or for yourself. Down there in description you will find a full list of materials, link to my store, link for PayPal donations to develop this channel and link to all my social networks where you could share your beautiful work that you did following my tutorials i will be so happy to see your creations and one more thing here at the eye icon and down there in description you could see a tutorial on how to make your own beading pattern and in this way you will make your own creations when you improve your beading skill thank you so much for watching bye bye from me Okay guys, so what I'm using here in this video are three colors of Delica beads, Mayuki Delica, they are size 11 and uh, I use black, yellow and red. Here what else I'm using obviously is this pattern that you will see all the time here at this place and uh, I will show in the tutorial so you could have a full use of this one and here I'm using chains, jump rings and a clasp. If you want to skip them and you don't want to buy chains, another idea is to make a beaded chain or a beaded rope to the bracelet and uh, there are a lot of tutorials out there for beaded ropes or chains and uh, you could use one of my ring bands as an example of a possible beaded chain and here I'm using size 10 beading needle. This is nylon thread, Nymo nylon thread, which is 0.2 millimeters or size D and you could use fireline or monofilament for this project, whatever you like. These are scissors and these are pliers that I used to attach these jump rings and the clasp to my chains. But if you're not using chains, they are not obligatory. Okay, so now I'm going to take about half an arm span of thread on my needle and I'll be back. Okay guys, and this tutorial I'm making with the familiar brick stitch. Uh, you could use peyote stitch uh, if you turn your work like this, but now I will show it with brick stitch. Okay, and here I will start my first row with six beads. If you're not familiar with the brick stitch, don't worry, I'm showing it really easy and slowly. So now first, uh, just to start uh, this row, I need a red and a black bead. Uh, and uh, I always start my rows with two seed beads when I make brick stitch, okay? And I'm taking two of those beautiful seed beads and I'm sliding those down. I will leave here a small tail because later I will put my needle on this tail and I'll finish my work. Okay, so now I will go, as I'm exiting through the second one, I will go through the first bead. And what I need to do is make them stay next to each other, like this, the holes pointing in one direction, just like this. You see how I arrange them. and then. I go through the other one, through the second one, okay? Now I have this. And in my next step, I wanna take yellow, yellow, black and red. Then I'm taking a yellow, going back through the black one, then again through the yellow, and we set according to our pattern that you will see here, another yellow. And then we will mirror this part, black and red. Okay, black.
and thread. Okay, and now because I don't like how they sit, I will go one more time around them. I will do this only for the first row. The next rows will be totally different. So don't worry that we will do this step every time. It's just for the first row to make it stronger and better. Okay, now you see how they sit nicely. Okay. This is the first row and for the second row I will need a red, uh, sorry, a black and a red and then yellow, red, yellow and again a red and a black and you will see it here as well. So I'm starting with a black and a red. I always start with two seed beads. I'm taking a black and a red and because now you see this row is wider than this one this one so i'm expanding my work or increasing my work and that is why i will go through the first thread bridge here if you're not don't know what are the thread bridges these are the thread bridges between those beads when you turn them in this direction you see so i'm going through the first one through this between the red and the black okay i'm going with my needle under this thread bridge and then you see how they sit not very nice and I will go through the first red bead that is closer to the center of my work or closer to my needle. Okay. And then when I pull and fix them, they stay like this. You see? Now yellow red yellow red black so yellow and i'm going one by one from here on i'm going under the next thread bridge with one yellow and then i'm going through the yellow red going under the next thread bridge and through the red, yellow, going under the next thread bridge, and through the yellow, okay, red, and going here at the last thread bridge, and through the red, and maybe you wonder where I will put the last one. Because I don't have any more thread bridges, it's easy. I'm putting it here at the same last thread bridge that I've already been through with my red. Like this. And go through the black. Okay. I have my second row ready. And now, guys, it's easier for me to flip my work because... I prefer to go in this direction. If it's easier for you in the other direction, it's okay. So now I want to take two black beads, then yellow, two reds, yellow and two blacks. So I'm starting again with two black beads. Now I go not uh, I go in the first thread bridge, not in the second one because I'm still expanding or increasing my work. And at one moment, when I get to the widest part, I will start decreasing and then I will show you what I do in order to decrease. And now I go through the second one of those two newly added beads that is closer to the center of my work. And I have my first two beads and the others I will add one by one. Yellow, red, red, yellow, black and black. Okay. I will show it a little bit faster.
okay now this is what I have and I added my last bit as you may see at the last thread bridge and at the last thread bridge I have two beads when I expand or increase my work okay and now I will flip it and I will show you this row one more time uh, this is one two three fourth row and I started with a black and a red and I will show you how I'm doing this take them go through the first thread bridge between those two black beads and go through the red one which is closer to the center then take my pattern again and I will take a black, a yellow, a red, a yellow, a black, a red and a black and I will show this faster if you want you could pause, rewind and uh, slow down the video but I will do this faster because I don't have unlimited time for uh, these videos. Okay, black, yellow, red. Okay, and I have this row done and I will flip my work and see how beautifully now this forms. Okay, so I'm up to this row and I have two more rows of increasing brick stitch and I will let you do this by yourself uh, because I'm sure if you have done it up to here, you know the principle and you just follow these two rows on the pattern. Okay. So how you do this, you start with a black and a red, go through the first thread bridge, uh, then continue red, black, two yellows, black, two reds and black, then flip and do this over one more time with starting with a black and a red and continue up to here. Okay, pause this video on this pattern, make these two rows and I'll meet you. And just a short view of the first of those two rows that I've been showing you. Okay, you see, I turn my work, I will do the next one and I'll be back. Okay guys, and here I am at the widest row of my work that I mentioned in the beginning. Okay, so now I will flip it. And what I wanna do is make the decreasing brick stitch, okay? Here I will start with this row with a black and a red and then red, black, two yellows, black, two reds and a black. Okay, so I start with a black and a red, always with two beads, a black and a red. Okay, then what I do is that I go not through the first thread bridge like I did before, but through the second thread bridge. Okay. So I'm going between this red and this yellow here, not between the black and the red, but between the red and the yellow, just like this. Then as usual, I go through this red bead. But I notice something, they don't stay uh, straight. So what I need to do is go one more time through them. This is because they stretch and they need to be fixed with a new thread pad in order to stay in a better shape like the bricks they need to be. Okay, so now I have this and now I need to take a red and a black and two yellows and I will show it faster. Okay, and now even without taking the putter, I intuitively know what to take because this first part mirrors 
the next one so or the next one mirrors the first part okay so now i need black two reds and a black so i'm taking a black Okay, now I have this and I want to flip my work and now I will show you one more time how I'm making the decreasing brick stitch. Okay, what was the same? The same thing is that I'm taking two beads, first two beads of the row, a black and a red in this case. So I'm taking the black and the red and the difference is that I go not through the first thread bridge but through the second thread bridge, okay. I go through the second one and then I go through the bit that is closer to the center and this is absolutely the same thing. Okay, so now the new thing besides going through the second thread bridge is that I go one more time reinforcing the beads. I wasn't doing it when I was expanding or increasing. But when I'm decreasing, I do this. Now I'm going to continue with black, yellow, red, yellow, black, red, and I'll go back to the last one. Okay, guys, and I'm here at my last step of this row, which is that I add one seed bead at my last thread bridge, and I don't add any more beads here. As you may see, this is the other difference between the increasing and the decreasing brick stitch. Now, guys, I will flip and I will continue with these three rows. And at, when I make each one of them, I will go back to show you the result and then we'll be ready. Okay, and the next row is ready and I will flip. I hope you paused uh, here on this pattern and did it. If not, do it now. Okay, I will do my next row and I'll be back. Okay, and I also have this row ready and it's time to make my last row. And for the last row, what I'm going to take according to my pattern is red and black, two yellows and then black and red. So I'm taking red and black and I'm going under the second thread bridge here. Then what I do is that I reinforce two yellows black and red Okay guys, now I have this and I'll show you how I will finish with this thread without making knots. So the trick is you just go through as many beads as you want in this direction. Then you go here in this direction. Okay. Then you go back. And the thing is that you just go up and down many times through the beads until you feel it's safe to cut your thread. Okay, now if you remember, I left this thread and I will put my needle on it and I'll do the same thing. I'll cut my thread and I'll be back. Okay, guys, and I'm back. And now uh, this is the part where I will assemble the bracelet. But before you assemble it, you should make two more of those elements. So you could pause this video, make the other two and be back to the work. If you want, you could make the bracelet with one element, not with three, it's okay. And now I'm going to put a new thread on my needle, let's say again, half an arm span. And I'm going to take one of those elements and I will do the same thing that I showed you before. I'm going through some beads with this new thread like this because I want to add it to my work and use it 
to assemble my bracelet. Okay, and I will go several times zigzagging through my work. Okay, you could zigzag even more than I'm showing here. I'm now I'm exiting here up out of this final bead. And what I want to do is attach this chain to this bead. And how I do this, uh, you could do it with pliers and put the jump ring inside this bead. But this bead is too small. That is why I'm going to attach it with seed beads. Okay, I'm taking two seed beads. Then I take this jump ring and then I take these two beads. If you have smaller jump rings that go inside this bead, you could go ahead and put them with pliers. But now I will show this approach. Okay. I'm putting this here. Now, what I want to do is reinforce this part. Okay, so now this chain is attached to my first element. If you're using one element, you could at attach this chain here and finish with this. But because I'm using three elements, what I want to do now is zigzag through my work and exit here. Okay, and by the way, you could cut this tail thread here as close as possible to your work. Okay, now I'm taking my next element and because here I also can attach it with jump rings, I will use these seed beads to attach it. Okay, I'm taking one bead and as I'm exiting through one of the beads that are sticking out the most, I'm going through the other one. Okay, this is what I have. And I take one more. And I go back here like this. Now, guys, I'm going to reinforce. Okay. Now guys, what I want to do is go here through all of those bits, exit here and attach this one to this one in the same way and then go out of this end. Okay, and I'm, I'm doing this off camera and I'll meet you here. Okay guys, and I repeated the same joint here like I did here. I went the same way through all of those beads and I exited here at this part and now I will take my second chain and attach it. Or if you're doing a beaded chain, just continue with this chain and connect it with a clasp and then with the other side. Okay, so now I'm going to take again two seed beads then i'm going to take this jump ring and i'm going to take two seed beads and what i do is that i go back here through this loop making a loop i mean and when you pull you have this now sh you should reinforce go up and down through the beads and cut your thread and your bracelet will be ready okay guys now my Delica Beads bracelet is ready. So if you enjoyed this tutorial and you want to see more and more videos like this, it's a good idea to subscribe and also hit the bell button. And in this way, you will be inspired often, usually twice or three times a week. 
and you will be able to make beautiful sets for presents or for yourself. Down there in description you will find the full list of materials, link to my store, link for PayPal donations to develop this channel and link to all my social networks where you could share your beautiful work that you did following my tutorials. I will be so happy to see your creations mainly on my Facebook and Instagram pages. You could also check my second channel with the fast clips and don't forget that in description I also have a tutorial on how to make your own beading pattern and you will be able to see it and make your own creations. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye from me.